Hey there, and welcome back. At SFU, in our BPK 409 course, we have decided that students have to hand in their code with their data in a way that the TA or the professor can mark it in a very easy way and look if the code is working properly. We have realized that for this, we have to go back a little bit to the roots of um, the path in the Python code. For this, let me share my screen here. This code is very similar to the code that we have talked about in lab one and one of the lab one tutorials. So um, just to quickly go over it, the code itself is not too important, but um, just to understand everything afterwards. I've imported two libraries here, the pandas and the plotting library. I, oh, what was that? Oh, there we go. <laughs> and um, I have added the call names X, Y, Z, and T. So the time. And then I have added um, the path of my data. So as you can he see here, my path is users, Patrick Meyerhofer, then I put it on the desktop and the folders are called path one, path two A, and the data itself is called lab one, question five or six dot txt, okay? And here I just specify the column names. Um, I specify that we separated the data with a space. And I wanna skip the first row and the last row because these two rows are usually a little bit dirty and it doesn't work well to analyze them. And then afterwards, I just plot the data here. So if I click on play here, what we get here is some kind of beautiful data. You might be familiar with this data because it's in the example data set for lab one. Then we didn't have to just answer or plot one kind of data set for lab one. We also had to um, plot another data set. So it's the same here, importing data, column names, then um, the path for this specific data. So here um, we have path one, then we have path to B and lab one question eight. Uh, txt at the same here and then we're plotting the data and if we go to play here that's what we get now okay and what we told you guys was that we would like you to hand in one code not two different codes one code and in a way that we can just click the code to say play and it will run through the, the whole code answer all the questions and plot all the plots that we have to do for um lab one altogether. So I'm gonna show you now how we can do this. If you look on the left side here, you can see um, my path as well. So we, it's a desktop, then on the desktop directly, I have code one and I have code two, and then I have a path one and I have a path two, and in path two we have lab one question five six, and in path two B we have lab one question eight, um, dot txt for the text file. So now I'm going to show you how we can put those two, those two, <laughs> those two data sets or two codes together. So let's make a new file here. Oh, that was the wrong button. Let's make a new file here. So obviously we can just copy and paste this part here and put it in here. So back here. I'm just going to save this now and I will save it. I will make a new folder on the desktop and I will call this new folder lab one Patrick. So this is going to be the folder that you guys will hand in. Okay. And in lab one Patrick, I will save this main code file. I think we said that it's called lab one main code. I'm not 100% sure. I might have to add a little um, little note here afterwards when I edit the video. Save it. Okay, so that's the, the main code now. So now I'm just, so I have this code here and now I'm gonna add the second code. I don't need to import the libraries anymore because they're imported. I also don't need to specify the call names anymore because the, the call names, this variable is already specified here. 
But what I can do is I can copy and paste this part here. Okay, so let's maybe say, um, hopla. Where is it? There we go. Let's say um, code one, or let's say question eight and nine. Oh, sorry, question five and six. And then down here, when we're importing again, we say question eight. Just to that's just for understanding. So it might also be good if you have a lot of comments in your file so that the TA or the professor will understand what you guys actually did there. Okay, and then we have everything here. So what's really important here is that you say you um, make a figure and then if you say plot figure zero again, it would plot it in the same file, but we don't want that. Maybe I can actually show you guys how this would look like then. So now we still have the original path, right? That's still to the, to the folder where the file or the yeah the files were saved before. So if you run this now, everything is in one data file. We don't want this. So we can either say here plot zero and plot uh, figure one. Then we'll make two different ones. Okay. Or if you just say plot figure without a number and plot figure without a number, it will just create a new figure for um, at this point. Okay, but now we also want to change the path because we want to have everything in this one folder that you guys have to hand in. So this means I just go to on here, I go to my finder and I said that I had my one data set in here in the path to A. I can put it in here. And then the other one I had in here, I put it here as well. And this now is very important. So we want the main code in here as well as all the data files in the same folder, okay? Because now I can just delete the, um, the path here and I can delete the path here as well. And at this point then it does not matter anymore if the TA or the professor um, where they will put this folder, as long as they are in this folder, it will work. So, because it will always, like if you're running the code in this folder and you want to open some um, file without a path, it will always look in this um, folder that you're in right now. So if I click on play right now, that's the magic. So that's what we need to see um, in when you're handing in your stuff. So one thing that might be important to know here is if I go somewhere completely else now, let's just say I'm going to path to, that's a, now a different folder. If I click play now, it still works. <laughs> it, it, it still works. The reason why this is, is because it knows that lab one main code is saved in this folder. So it jumps right back into this folder. If the main, if lab one main code would be in a different folder than the two files here, then it would not work anymore. So, um, let's just keep it with that. I think, I think that hopefully makes it clear enough. And if not, then please let me know in the comments or let me know via email or anything like that. I hope that this video helped everyone at SFU in BPK 409 to understand what's the best way and the right way to hand in the data for us to mark in a very efficient way. But I also hope that this will really help um, professors and TAs at another university at other universities um, to implement this way of efficiently and fast marking and having a look at the codes of their students. With this, I'm gonna say goodbye and I'll see you in the next videos.